Hi, I'm Tony Pazensky. I'm here in uh, the Gracie Gulf Coast in uh, Mississippi. I'm here with Jay, the owner of the school. We're going to do a technique, uh, a gi variation and a no gi, a no gi variation and a gi variation. And it's called the boa choke. So let's get started. All right, so here we are in this, this starting point. We're going to look at a couple things that people should be aware of. When you start in on the, the front headlock, if you go into a guillotine type of position or grip, that causes an indicator for the person to start grabbing my wrist. They start, they start thinking, man, the person might go to submission and they start behaving a certain way. Also, there are certain chokes that we do when he's on his elbow. One of them is the, the anaconda roll where you, you push this to your hand and you're in this position. You can squeeze or you can put your head into the pocket, roll the person over and you get into the anaconda choke and squeeze. So that's a particular way of doing a submission hold with the gi or without. Elbows down, please. Next, if you're not gonna be going for the, the front hand lock to the arm control, a lot of times you come to the side, through the vice grip, you throw the person down to the shoulder, and then you can lock in the, the no gi bravo choke. Come to this side, please, a little bit. Or the darsh choke, here. So these are some submissions that people are very familiar with. When you get into uh, uh, different styles of grappling, there are sometimes you get in some neck cranks where you're holding the, the shoulder and holding your wrist and you use your, your chest to kind of squeeze the guy in a front chancellery choke and it comes on really fast. So those are things that we need to be aware of when we start to introduce what is called the, the boa choke. And it's kind of like a, the snake, right? So it's kind of like the anaconda, it's kind of like a darts, but it looks like this. That's the, that's the boa choke. So here's how I did it. I start in on the front headlock at this position, and I'm going for the underhook, just like this. My hand is gonna grab my bicep. Again, I'm trying to avoid this like guillotine ch ch choke where the person is gonna be threatened to grab my wrist. Just wanna do like a control here. It's very easy to do this. Now, as I'm holding my bicep, if I can get more here towards my tricep, it's gonna be tighter. But I take what I can get. Now, the most common mistake I see people do is they put their head in the pocket where they put their head here and they wanna roll if they know this choke or not. I don't want you to do that. I want you to try to center line your chest over the top of the person's head here. Because I'm using my abs to kind of crush the person's head down when I do the choke. So I want you to kind of center your gravity. I step my foot up and I fall to the side. To my hand, I fall right here and I hang out. Now I start to squeeze with my biceps. I start to squeeze the choke and I start to walk towards them. It's gonna close the gap, the choke. So it goes from like being ideally Super subtle, he's not stressed out about the, the, front the front choke. We fall over and then I move a little bit and then it comes on really tight and really fast. That would be the ideal boa choke. So this is the no gi version. Now we're gonna look at the gi version. So now we're gonna look at the boa choke but with the gi, it's gonna be a little bit different. There's usually two things that happen here. It's almost like a boa loop choke because the person can wiggle out of it and I gotta come off to the top position. So now I'm here, same idea, coming from the top position. Now instead of holding my bicep and getting the underhook, I held his lapel. Come up a little bit. So ideally I would like to come down here and, and again play the game of he's not threatened. But to be more of a, of a loop choke, I need to be around the collarbone. That gives me the slack to go into the loop. If I go too, too high, I don't have that slack to do a loop choke. So I'm kind of playing that here. I get the underhook, I have a nice grip. My chest comes to here, coming towards the center. I step and we fall to my side. Right here, this is where I'm starting to crank this choke with the lapel. But Tony, what if he starts, he starts to wiggle? You need to, he gets his head out a little bit. I need to start to come up to the top. And now I have a wrapping loop choke. It's almost like a chin strap choke, like a wrestling pin. So I have to be able to position myself where I'm doing the choke or with the gi. And when I feel like I'm starting to lose it, Try to come up to the top and put his head into the pocket so you get that nice strangle. Okay, so this is uh, an idea of no gi and with the gi.